Hey everyone, welcome back, and today we're back on this world because I have for you today the redstone version of the frequency combination lock or the action combination lock that I made two days ago. And today, yeah, we have the redstone version of that. So if you guys haven't watched the video, that video yet, you guys can click on the iCard there. Uh, but today we're looking at this redstone version. So the redstone version of course is a lot complicated as you expect. So before we actually look at the redstone, we can uh, demonstrate how it works again in case uh, if you guys haven't watched the video yet. So basically we have to input a string of action in order to send the correct frequency to the Skok sensor. Uh, so this is the string of combination that I've created for my lock. So first is brick block. You can see that there, right there, the feed tape actually moved. And the next one is water. Placing down water. And then the third one is splash. And okay, so I somehow sent the wrong combination uh, frequency. So let's try that again. Brick block, and then place down water, and then the next one is splash, and then the next one, which is the fourth, cast a rod. And then the next one is step. And then finally the last one is retracting your rod. And then the door should open, just like that. So yeah, if you messed up any of those uh, string of action, it will actually reset itself without like any buttons or uh, secret ways to send a signal into the machine uh, to reset but it will reset itself so that means if you mess up you can immediately just start over uh, with the combination of your lock again so it won't raise any suspicion that there is actually a combination lock and a secret entrance here so once you're in here you can press this button to close the door and also open it like that so you can just close it up when you're in here and you can do whatever stuff you want and when you want to go out you can just press this button and get out of here so that is basically the concept so now let's take a look at the redstone components so first right here we have a skok sensor which is the block that is gonna receive the frequencies and it will go into this interpreter here and right here I actually made an upgrade so previously uh, let's talk about what is this first so this is actually this com uh, redstone component right here I don't know the name of it but it is broken in the newest uh, 1.16 full release because in 1.16 the redstone actually changed and this will no longer work because if you guys can see here the redstone actually stopped here and this redstone dust is actually not powered and because the redstone change you can now power this redstone repeater when you only reaches here and this redstone dust is basically useless so yeah that is the problem so right here i just made an adjustment to that thing right there and this is what we got and right here it will go into a mono stable circuit which means it will change the redstone length to two game ticks or one redstone tick and it will come down here so this yellow thing right here is just to bring the redstone signal down so that we have more space to work with and then it will go into this line of blocks 
and we'll power the redstone repeater here and also power this line of redstone here so this basically is a feed tape where it can know that if the current combination or the current frequency is correct so right here you can see there are emerald blocks and also glass blocks the emerald brought blah the emerald blocks are the correct frequencies so the first one is uh, 13 and then the next one is 12 so it basically lines up correctly when it is uh, its turn so the first line here we have 13 and if we send the correct frequency which is uh, 13 because this is solid block and glass isn't that means that if it is the correct frequency there will be redstone signal in here and this will run into two feed tapes so basically if it is correct the feed tape will actually turn once so that the second uh, verifier will be at the correct place to get verified and also right here we have another feed tape which its main purpose is just to know which one is the first set and which one is the last set so when it resets we know when to stop it to have the first row to be here and also uh, back there and we can also use this to know if we already solved the combination lock because we can know that the last row is at the correct place and we can use that to open the door so how we know if it is correct or incorrect is pretty simple so right here this is a very crucial piston right here so if it is correct there will be redstone signal back here and it goes into this piston right here so there are two steps to this so the first step is sending a signal into this piston and the second step is sending a redstone signal through so if it is correct there will be redstone signal back here and the first step is to power this piston which it will push the block to here if it is correct and the second step is to send the power through if it is correct the block will be here and the signal cannot go through but if it is incorrect and there isn't any signal here and so the first step when the piston needs to push this block back it will not do that if it is incorrect because there won't be any signal and the second step is sending a signal through so if it is incorrect there will the piston won't extend and the signal will go through here and right here basically what we have is a reset circuitry so if it wants to reset the redstone block will go down here we will explain why this is blocking it later so if the if, if it wants to reset it will go down here and it will make this clock start working and because the redstone block is unpowering this redstone torch right here so that means this clock isn't working so when it resets which this redstone block will go down this clock will start to work and basically turns this feed tape and also this feed, feed tape around and we use uh which one is it this this right here to know when it should stop so if it is water it will send three redstone signal uh, so that means the redstone will go through but if it is lava it will only send one signal through so it won't power this sticky piston to retract the redstone block to stop this clock from powering the fit tape to turn so basically <laughs> if it is detected that there is actually water here it will stop the feed tape by retracting this redstone block up and it stops this uh, clock to be actually actually be working okay <laughs> so we can explain this now so what this is is basically if the first set 
is in its correct position already, it will stop this redstone block to get pushed down because it is already at the correct position and doesn't need to be reset. So if it is at the correct position and we still send the wrong frequency, that will send the power to this piston, which will push down this redstone block to start the reset process. But because we already is at the correct position, we don't need to reset. So this pushes a block to here, so that means that this redstone block cannot be pushed down because there is an unmovable block here, stopping it from extending. And right here, this is another thing that we have to do, which is if it is not resetting, this will not stop the feed, feed tape from turning because when you solve the combination of course, this feed table also turn, but because when you're solving the water cauldron will actually pass through here, and we don't want to solve the combination and suddenly the combination resets itself. So right here, we just ensure that if it is resetting, this stopping mechanic uh, mechanism will actually work. But if it is not in its reset. Uh, resetting state, this will not work. So right here we just cut off the circuitry. And now let, let's talk about this. So this is how we know when to open the door. So if the lava is right here, which is the correct uh, place, it will actually send a signal through and open the door. But it is more complicated than that. So the first thing that we want to prevent is to get the water cauldron to actually open the door because that is not the last row of combination that uh, should be here because the first row should be here and also uh, here and this lava represents the last row of the combination. So. If it is water, it will send out three signal strength, and it will not send a signal, any signal to the door opening part there. But if it is lava, it will send one signal, and it will actually send a signal through. And right here, the gray color uh, component is another thing that we also have to prevent from it actually making a logic error so what we're doing here is actually if it is resetting it will redirect this redstone uh, dust to be like this so it will stop the redstone from actually sending to the opening and closing uh, door uh, part which is because when it resets the lava will be reset it here because this is the correct position for the uh, last row to be in when it is at its uh, original position because uh, so this right here is the first row which is 13 and the last row is uh, which one uh, is this right here and we're preventing uh, if it is resetting it will actually open up the door because when it is reset it is at the correct position to open the door and we don't want that so when it is resetting we won't let it send any signal to the opening door part and when it is not resetting, which is when you solve it, it can send it the signal through because you solved it. So that is the super complicated explanation of this thing. And also it is not the most compact thing ever, but I mean, it works. So that is basically what every component does. 
And right here, the brown component is to just get the redstone signal out of the button to open the door. So nothing special. And right here, we have some wool so that when it opens or closes the door, it will not send any signal to the skulk sensor because if a piston extends or retract, it will send a vibration to the skulk sensor, which is not what we want. Okay, so now let's look at it again once you uh, understand how it works. So if we send the wrong signal uh, when it is already at its correct position to solve the first uh, frequency, it will not reset. Uh, which you can tell by uh, the piston feed tape will actually not turn. So if we place block, there isn't anything happening because it is stopping itself from resetting because it is already correct. So now let's continue by uh, breaking the block which is the correct frequency. It will turn and when it turn it will send it will push the second row of verifier to the solving position so that we can solve the second frequency. So the second one is placing a water down. It turns because it is correct and now it pushes the third verifier uh, so that it can solve the third frequency. So the third one is splash. Like that. So it turns again because it is correct. Now what if we send the wrong signal to the skulk sensor? And let's see how it resets. So we will send a step signal which is 1, which is not correct. There, and it will reset itself. Just like that. So basically <laughs> that is how it works. And now let's try to solve everything correctly and open up the door. Break a block. It is correct. Water bucket, it is correct. And now splash, which is signal strength 6, correct. And now casting a rod, which is 14, correct. And now let's stand a step signal, which is signal strength 1. It is correct. And now lastly, we just have to retract our rod which is uh, 15 and then it opens up the door it's that simple uh, so again if we send any wrong signal it will not reset because it resets itself so nothing happens if you send a signal through like this nothing will happen and once you get in here you can just push a button to close the door and you can chill in here so yeah, that is basically it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave like and also subscribe. <coughs> this is a very interesting uh, contraption which uses the skulk sensor to its uh, fullest extent using the ability of it able to detect different frequencies and sending different signal strength based on what action you do. You do. So yeah, that is it for today's video. This is a very complicated redstone component here and I don't expect anyone to build this in their survival world but you can definitely build this since uh, you can get all of these components uh, like the redstone dust, pistons, the rails and target blocks and stuff like that in survival which you previously cannot do when I did the uh, command block version. And also one thing that I want to say is that target blocks are too underrated because uh, if guys notice, I actually used a lot of target blocks in this uh, contraption here. So you can see one right here, a whole row right here. Uh, right here I also used some and also right here. And where else, right here. So it's a pretty 
it's super useful when you build redstone uh, contraptions and if you still don't use them I would encourage you to try those out and what I basically use them for is to just bend the redstone wire into whatever component you have when you have such tight space like this so yeah right here because I cannot place one more block back here I just used a target block to redirect the redstone wire into this monostable circuit right here and it goes out like this and right here I just redirected the redstone wire into this clock because we have such a tight space here so that is another usage of it right here what I use it for is to just redirect the redstone wires into the pistons and yeah, right here I just used it to redirect the redstone wire uh, momentarily because we don't want any signal through and that is what I used it for here. So it's a, it's a super useful block uh, and I really like it very much. So make sure to use it. So that is it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave like and also subscribe. Uh, yeah, I'm Proxy now. See you guys in the next video. Bye.